Ed Padgett here, welcome to my channel. You're gonna to find tons of videos here about scoliosis, back pain, and lifestyle medicine. Have a little look around and watch to your heart's content. Today we're gonna to talk about spinal health, and we're gonna look at a very important exercise to do, which is actually for your hips. And I'll explain why in a minute. Now you see your hips are the largest joints in the body and when the hip isn't working it will shunt movement up towards the lumbar spine and it will shunt movement down towards your knee. And where, we, where do we have the most common problems? Knee problems and low back problems. And this is usually because the hip is not doing its job properly. So what we want to do is first work out how flexible your hips are. And I have videos on this but I'm just going to recap real quick here. So one of the, the most important uh, exercises to, or stretches to look at is how far you can extend your hip. So here, we wanna keep a nice strong core, keep the lower back in a relatively neutral position and slide the hips forward and see whether or not we can get extension at this hip. What extension means is, if you draw a line from my, my head through my shoulders, through my hips down to my knee, I should be able to drive my knee behind that imaginary line. We're looking for about 15 to 20 centimeters of difference between this line and my knee joint. Now that's not, that's with me not using my lower back. If I use my lower back, I can go way further, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the pelvis to remain sort of level to the ground as we go forward. Okay, so firstly, have we got hip extension? If not, check out one of my other videos and I'm gonna link the, uh, the exact uh, URL to that below. Now, what we're looking for now is the ability to move the hip independently of the lower back. So for example, you know, if, I'm moving, if I'm moving just like this and I'm flexing and I'm extending every time I move my hip, then that's gonna wear out my lower back in no time. So we wanna be able to coordinate the hips so that they don't use the lower back. And one way to do that is to perform a very slow, mindful exercise that moves the hip through its entire range of motion. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So we're gonna get onto all fours. And we're gonna set ourselves in this position. And that means we're not dumping into our shoulder blades. We're actually pushing our, our chest up away from the, the floor. We're not rounding our back too much. We're keeping a nice kind of neutral back, especially in between the shoulder blades. And the lower back here, you can see it here, is not dropped down or dumped down like this. And it's not flexed, it's somewhere in the middle. But my abdominals are switched on. So I'm actually sucking my abs in and I'm making them strong. If someone was to, to touch here, it would be, it would be strong, it would be solid. Now from here, I want to be able to move my hip backwards as far as it can go. Now, with the knee bent like this at 90 degrees, I might not get full extension. So usually I can extend backwards, and we saw that in this exercise, I can extend my hip backwards. But now I'm doing that against gravity, so I'm using the muscles to do that. And it's a different proposition. Keeping my knee flexed at 90 degrees, I want to keep my foot as high as it can be as I move my knee in a circle. So my abdominals are strong, I'm still breathing, and I'm keeping my foot and knee as high as they can go round in a big circle. Now, I'm not Mr. Flexible, so you're not going to see some amazing feat of athleticism here. You're gonna see what an average guy does when he tries to move his hip. It's not moving very far, and I don't expect it to move far. Keep your abs strong, try and get the, the try and start with the knee at least parallel to the ground. Bring that round, and see how long you can keep that foot up towards the ceiling for, bring it up towards your elbow, and then back round. And you'll notice that all the muscles of your hip start to fire up here, and you'll, you'll feel them screaming out, especially if you're doing five to 10 repetitions of this, nice and slowly. And over time, those muscles are gonna get stronger, the hip's gonna coordinate more to move by itself without using your lower back. So one more, one more tip here, one more thing to look for, is that when you're around here, it's easy to lift up your whole pelvis and rotate it. So it gives you the impression that your leg is really high, but actually it's not. It's just because you're rotating your pelvis. So imagine there's a glass of water on your lower back and we've got to keep that from moving or keep that from spilling. Even as we're going around here and we're thinking, oh, this isn't very far and our ego is getting a little check because we think our hips are more mobile than they are, but generally they're not.
They are a little bit weaker than we think they are, and this is a great exercise to bring back mobility and strength. And even my cat Jerry thinks so as well. So if you like these videos, haha, if you like what you're seeing, don't forget to press like, subscribe so you get the next one, and share. Share this with someone who you think can benefit from these specific hip exercises. And also, if you have a question, just PM me, send me a message. I'm happy to answer because helping people that uh, are on YouTube is something that I really, really enjoy doing. And if I've got an answer for you, I will share that.